Hey, what's going on, guys? It is the SMT. Thank you for tuning in to watch this edition of the SMT YouTube channel. Very grateful that you could stop by and make it here for this video. So due to that, I do want to kind of be kind of quick with this video. I don't want it to take too much time, but I do want to give a couple of shouts out to what we're doing here with the community. Big shout out to the SMT Patreon page, as well as the SMT Twitter handle. We've got links in the description box for both of those, as well as the SMT Wireless Report audio only podcast we also have the second channel where all of the live stream podcasts get archived so those links are there as well as the megadon.net invite code never need another social media platform ever again no algorithms no ads no tracking megadon.net do check out those links down there in the description box now for today's content in terms of what i'm bringing to the table today with this video is a little bit of a look into the future of what Qualcomm is going to be doing with its third generation uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 G modem. It's something that I think deserves some attention because it is going to be a big deal once it is made available. It is going to be revolutionary in terms of making a huge leap in wireless connectivity. So it is going to be built on a five nanometer process. Previously, Qualcomm has touted 10 nanometer, 8 nanometer, and 7 nanometer processes. So clearly chips are getting smaller and more and more powerful and also energy efficient. So this is just another step in that evolution. Currently, you will see a lot of the Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, chipsets coming with X50 and X55 modems. Those are all the 5G cable modems that they offer. In terms of the key feature of the X60, what you're going to be seeing is something unique. Carrier aggregation between different types of 5G connections. So that means FDD and TDD connections, as well as carrier aggregation from sub-6 to sub-6 connections, as well as sub-6 gigahertz to millimeter wave spectrum connections. Very, very interesting there. So we could see a huge I wouldn't want to I don't know if it's going to be an enormous leap, but I think a pretty large leap in connection speed uh, Expect improved efficiency expect better battery consumption So you should get better battery life. I think sub 6 gigahertz alone could really offer a huge boost They're saying five gigs per second uh, as its maximum on sub 6 by itself uh, DSS will be able to it'll be able to support that that should help with coverage and speeds connecting to other types of uh, connections also capable on dual sim LTE C band CBRS all that will be there and also standalone and non standalone connections all right now in terms of millimeter wave compatibility the x60 will be compatible with uh, 26 28 and 39 gigahertz that covers T-Mobile AT&T and Verizon other key features full RF front end for sub 6 gigahertz same as x50 as well as the x55 availability wise no actual date disclosed by qualcomm themselves all this other information was made available by them but uh, it's still not actually in true production let alone mass production so i would say expect sometime in 2021 uh probably with the galaxy devices i would i would assume uh, but wow, speeds are going to be able to get really, really fast with this, uh, with these modems. Uh, sub six gigahertz midband is coming uh, later on next year, uh, so we're expecting that to really take a strong hold in 2021 for all carriers. But we should see T-Mobile doing some things with what Sprint holds bring into the table. Some really good holdings of midband. I'd like to see more of that get rolled out. So. You know as that kind of matures and gets deployed this modem would be able to take advantage of that for sure millimeter wave obviously is going to start to really fill up urban centers verizon focusing on that as well as at&t business on the enterprise side now expect verizon t-mobile and at&t to th theoretically now be able to combine mid-band and millimeter wave huge enormous throughput potential and i think also lt upgrades should continue you know seven carrier aggregation now kind of evolving maybe expecting more in the future and this should be awesome with pre-existing technologies and the one last thing i wanted to mention and this kind of like slipped through i think with some of the news that's been going on lately qualcomm snapdragon potentially launching the a65 plus soc at some point this year we're hearing q3 of uh, I believe it was 20, yeah, it was 2020. So we are expecting that very soon. Uh, you know, scheduling for the third quarter, we should be getting more details pretty soon, maybe in the next couple of months, maybe at some point in Q2. The focus will be in gaming applications, uh, maybe desktop level performance. 
Uh, you know, multi-gig connectivity, of course. You can also see improved connectivity and signal, battery life, efficiency, uh, just general performance upgrades over the standard 865. So you guys, let me know what you think of the news I presented to you here with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 coming out possibly uh the plus coming out possibly later this year q3 and then also the x60 chip offered some great details there really looking forward to that chip can't wait for that to become available to the general public at some point probably next year so drop me a line in the comment section below i'd love to hear what you guys have to say the voice of the people the smt nation always uh you know i look forward to hearing what you guys have to say so go ahead and uh, drop me a line down there and uh of course if you want to help the channel out do me a solid. Go ahead and share this to your favorite social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. That's awesome. That helps the channel quite a bit. Also, rate this video, like it, and that pretty much wraps it up for this one. Again, I am the SMT. Thank you guys for being here to watch this. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.